we've seen how important pollination is for flowering plants and how insects in particular are incredibly valuable vectors for transporting pollen among plants. Now let's look at the situation from the pollinator's point of view. How are insect pollinators doing? Insects and plants have evolved partnerships over millions of years. Indeed, since the very first flowers attracted beetles and flies some 125 million years ago. Some plant-insect interactions are downright bizarre. Consider the very recent discovery that a common New England bog orchid, Platanthera obtusata, gives off the aroma of human body odor in order to attract mosquitoes to pollinate it. So we ask, what's happening to insect pollinators? Well, we've been hearing a lot in the media about the precipitous decline of the monarch butterfly, a glorious insect that was once a common sight throughout the country. Now, monarchs face enormous pressures from the destruction of the forests that shelter them in Mexico, as shown here, to the loss of their North American habitats and their critical host plants, milkweeds, these are species in the genus Asclepius. Milkweed is called so because it's a common, tenacious competitor in agricultural fields. There's been a concerted effort to eradicate huge populations of these plants. But the monarch butterfly depends on milkweed as a source of food for its larvae, which are among the few insect species that can tolerate the defensive chemicals, cardiac glycosides, that circulate in its milky white sap. When these plants disappear, there's nowhere for the butterflies to lay their eggs. Now, the good news is that people across the country have taken up the cause of replanting milkweeds in their gardens and fields, rebuilding habitat for these insects. There are dozens of places that sell milkweed seed packets and that can coach you on how best to grow milkweeds. It's important to plant species that are native to your region, though. At Go Botany, you can learn about the 10 species of Asclepius that we have in New England. And not only will native milkweeds attract monarchs, but a host of other insects love them for their tasty nectar. Some plant pollinator relationships, as we've seen, are very specific. This Carner blue butterfly, for example, can only lay its eggs on a single species of host plant, the sundial lupin, Lupinus perennis. Now, lupins have become quite rare in New England, where their usual sand plain habitats have been converted to airports, housing developments, and other uses. And as a result, this attractive butterfly is declining too, and is listed as federally endangered. It's known now only from a few locations scattered from Minnesota to New Hampshire. But there is more good news. Some large-scale efforts are underway to protect and restore thousands of acres of sand plain habitat. Later on this week, you'll hear about one ambitious project that's restoring an exemplary sand plain in central Massachusetts. Now, another pollinator in the news is the honeybee which is exhibiting dramatic declines throughout North America and elsewhere. Honeybees are the hard-working pollinators of most of our flowering crops and fruit trees, in addition to wildflowers, and their loss results in significantly lowered harvests. Beekeepers nationwide report that since 2006, an average of 30% of their bee colonies have died due to a phenomenon called colony collapse disorder. A colony collapses when only a single queen is left with insufficient worker bees to provision her and the hive offspring. So what's going on with that? Well, there are a constellation of synergistic factors that are killing bees. A host of new pathogens are affecting them, from deformed wing virus to fungi and new parasites such as varroa mites, shown here on the left, attacking a bee pupa. In addition, bees develop nutritional problems when there's a lack of diversity or availability in pollen and nectar sources. Our obsession with large expanses of perfect lawn means that a tiny bee must fly a long distance to find any flowers, if it can. Another possible cause of colony collapse disorder involves the widespread use of pesticides. 
particularly a class of chemicals called neonicotinoids, or neonex for short, that was introduced in the 1990s. Seeds of crops and other commercially grown plant species are often doused in these chemicals, which are absorbed into the growing embryo and the germinating seedling. So any insect feeding on or collecting nectar or pollen from the growing plant also absorbs these chemicals. And bees that are affected by neonics have impaired navigation, reduced food consumption, poorer survival rates, and lower reproduction. As a result, the Environmental Protection Agency has issued a moratorium on the production of new neonic products, but that doesn't eliminate the use of many tons of existing chemicals by the agricultural industry and millions of homeowners. Honeybees aren't the only insects affected. Bumblebees, solitary bees, mason bees, and other species are showing symptoms of neonic poisoning as well. And when wild bees decline, the plants they pollinate also suffer. In a recent study of the state of the plants in New England, New England Wildflower Society found that most of the rare plants uh, that have declined in numbers of populations from 1996 to 2012 are disproportionately dependent on insects for pollination. We may be detecting the signal that when pollinators become rarer, so too do plants and vice versa. So what to do to save the pollinators? There is plenty. Replace your lawn with native plants that pollinators will relish. Native plants are adapted to our landscape and are easier to grow without the use of pesticides and herbicides. Hey, we're gonna be offering another online course in planting with native plants, so check it out. Shop smart, too. Select plants that come from growers who do not use neonix. Ask your garden center if they use these chemicals. And finally, cultivate an appreciation for insects. We often vilify or fear them, but they really are the little things that run the world. <laughs>